Welcome back to Technogits. In this video, I will cover how do we create a very basic J2 application and package it as a WAR file and deploy it in a Tomcat 10. The process is same for either simple dynamic J2 application with a simple JSP or multi-layered complex Java components or it may be it may include EJP also. The process is same for any, any kind of J2 application. So what a typical J2 application architecture? So if you if you are looking at here, um, the first thing what you have is a UA component. That's a combination of JSP, HTML, CSS. And uh, you have a JSP, servlet and WebSocket. Um, so these are all Jakarta standards. The WebSocket is a recent addition to Jakarta standards. So Jakarta um, J Jakarta server pages, Jakarta servlet, Jakarta WebSocket. Okay. Um, so earlier than that, it was called Java standard, Java server, Java servlet. Um, then, so these are the server side component, and these components can have the backing backend processing layer or it can have database processing layer the jdbc connection for oracle or mysql so the, these layers and or maybe it can have a do layer so or for example if you want to have much more high grade enterprise application you can include ejp so one thing which you have to note for ejp if your J2 application contains EJV, so you can't use your uh, use Apache Tomcat. You need to use full-blown application server, something like Oracle WebLogic, or or a Red JBoss EAP. So if you don't have EJV component, we can use a plain servlet container like Apache Tomcat or Jetty servlet container. Okay, so the typical or typical structure of a J2 application contains like a main, the Java. This particular directory contains your backend processing layer classes. And we have web app. Inside that you have meta enough and web enough. So web enough have a lib folder. This lib folder contains supporting libraries. For example, now if you have a database connectivity, then your JDBC driver all that goes here. That is third party library goes. And all of your UI component goes directly under web app. The whole thing will be packaged as a WAR file. Okay. So the prerequisite for this video activity is Java 17, Tomcat 10, Eclipse ID 20, 21, 12. Those are the version I have used. You can use earlier version Java earlier than 17 or Tomcat 9. So in order to do this, uh, please watch my install series videos where I cover all of these installations. Okay, let's dive into coding. Okay, let's go ahead and create Hello World J2 web application, right? Uh, so in order to do that, uh, you need to click file new there are various applications maven project or enterprise application project dynamic web project djb there's a quite a lot of variety okay so for our case what we wanted is we want a dynamic web project which consists of jsp file servlets html all that let's go ahead and create this say hello so what do you first thing what you give is a project name and you have a location where it will be created and uh, there is a runtime environment so i'll show you how what are the runtime is for example these are the supported runtimes so what we are using our runtime is um, tomcat apache tomcat version 10 so i have configured that as a 10 
so dynamic web, dynamic web module version is fine okay let's go ahead and say next so these are default source files when you say servlet and js there may be some supporting java files and the backend so all of those files will go into this place so the last one is um, this the context root means this will be your application name it's a war file the war came file hello.war and it will be under web app okay so we need on our deployment descriptor web.xml let's go ahead and create this it will take a couple of seconds to do that what it take it does is it is generating the basic skeleton of a web application the directory structure how it's supposed to look like okay for example it's created now you see there is an src all of your source file goes into this java web app java is your java source web app is your html content goes html and jsp content so the other important file which we have to see is web.xml let's see that so when you look at this there is a two view design view as well source view so these are the welcome file list means if you keep any of the file with default.htm default.jsp and default.html all of these files will be your main file these are list of main files as soon as anybody puts hello as your context root okay then when you say is default.jsp we'll go ahead and create one default.jsp file jsp file is nothing but java server pages okay so this file is supposed to be under web, web app okay click on this jsp file um remember the name supposed to be default but it can be any name if you want to call it separately otherwise i'm going to keep this as a default default.jsp okay so what format would you like to take this it's a jsp file html file okay let's generate it now what i would like to display here i'll say welcome to j2e for that we'll keep this itself as a h1 h1 is a header one and h2 uh, in between we'll put on the chart since it's a dynamic page we would like to show the dynamic aspect of this uh, html uh, i wanted to display the date and time okay so in order to do that i will use scriptlet um, Okay, so when you say this new date, this is nothing but java.util.date. Let's java.util. Okay. One way I'll say this new java.util.date. Otherwise, I can use a page import. Both will work. Now, what I'm saying is this is a expression. Automatically, this will be displayed. Okay. So we have done it. Now, what is our next step? One is we can deploy this within um, for a production, for a deploy, for an editing or a, for a developing. I can configure local Tomcat and I can run it locally. And once we have done with the changes, we can go ahead and export this as a var file and put it in the existing Tomcat. So let us see that how we do that part. Okay, so let us see how do we package this file as a war file 
and deploy into the existing Tomcat. That's an ideal scenario as a production environment. What we do, okay? The first thing is go ahead and click file. There are multiple ways. This is the simplest one which I'm showing. Say export. It will be your click on hello file export. Say what type of export you would like to do. We'll make it as a war file. It will be hello war and uh, where do you would like to put? So we would like to see this under Tomcat place that is Java programs Tomcat the app. Okay. So this will go under war and say overwrite existing file. So what happens whenever I make any change click on export automatically it will be exported into this place and it will be exploded and it will be ready to serve. Okay, I'll say finish. So it's exported. It's a small file. We don't have much. Okay, let me show you the file of I mean the directory structure. For example, this is web apps and you see hello just now we exported and it's immediately exploded so what do you mean by explode and export it export it as a war file this will be explode as a file and it will show the content this is how it appears so that's a typical web applications feature okay now how do we access this one so we have exported, it is running. Let's go ahead and access this. So in order to access or allow world, pro allow world program, what you have to do is localhost colon 8080 slash, this is where the context file comes into, that is our scissor hello. Welcome to C2E web app. So this is congratulations you have deployed a C2E application war file into Tomcat and you are able to access. So this is the context and this is your JSP file and this date what it gives. This is a dynamic part. For example you wanted to see that. You can see this seconds will keep changing as you reload it will keep changing. Okay. So this is about accessing the application after you deploy it. This is how we test simple application and we can make it more complex with adding more JSPs, backend servlets, backend Java classes too. So most of the typical e-commerce application are multi-layer processes which process the input and also it produces a various output and it goes back to the DB layer, um, app layer, caching layer and it comes to front end okay this is about simple deployment